State of Search. This is the State of Search News Roundup for week 36, September 13, 2010. The State of Search News Roundup is provided by stateofsearch.com, where we look at what's going on in the world of search and social media. Hi there, here we are again with another State of Search News Roundup, and we're trying to do this again with video and MP3, so podcast format and video format. I hope the quality is better this time. Uh, it's another Monday, it's another week, and it's another news roundup with a lot of news, uh, which we're going to be talking about in the next few minutes. If you are interested in what's going on in the world of search, be sure to check out statussearch.com. You can also find all the links to all the articles related on uh, this specific news roundup, so everything we're talking about, links to them there on the website statussearch.com. Enjoy this week's episode. So here are some of the things we've highlighted for you this week. Of course, Google Instant, Facebook passing Google in spending time, Bing growth, New York Times going social, and Google might be leaving organic, and a lot more. The news of the week, of course, if you've been following search last week, you can't have missed this one, the big change Google made. Introducing Google Instant, results changing when you type. It's yet another step of Google towards a faster moving web and there are a lot of different opinions on whether or not this is either good or bad and what it, this means for SEO and search in general. Go check out the articles on State of Search, we've got a couple of them on uh, all the opinions. We've asked a lot of experts on what they think about Google Instant and uh, whether or not it's going to affect the way we work. Be sure to check those out on the website statussearch.com. We'll go on quickly with some other news. Google has many faces, so you know, you can call them a search engine, you can call them an email provider, you even can call them a phone company. Google's search engine is still their main business, however, and ever since that it started, they have a philosophy statement on their website, and according to their philosophy page, Google was a company whose stated goal is to have users leave its website as quickly as possible, so get away as soon as, as, as you can from the Google pages. Uh, Google last week, however, changed two words in their statements. Its website became our homepage. A subtle difference, but maybe an important one. They don't want you to go off their site, they want you to get off their homepage. So that could be just to another Google page. After Search Engine Lab reported on this last week, Google reacted, saying that this was a small editing change made by unconsciously made by a proofreader, and they changed it back, so uh, that's all gone again. The question remains, was this ignorance from Google, or was it something else? Over to Facebook, which last Thursday was noted by city analyst Mark Mayany that he uh, put out a when he put out a research note from Comscore data showing Facebook had passed Google in terms of time spent online. Mayany said, looking at a percentage of total time spent by the top five site in August, Facebook for the first time took the top spot with 41.1 minutes followed by Google with 39.8 minutes. Yahoo fell to the third spot, and whether or not this means Facebook now officially passes Google, as biggest website uh, around there cannot be said. Uh, they are different sites after all, and uh, there are different ways of measuring that. Good news for the keyword resources out there, maybe. Uh, Google earlier last week uh, quietly updated the numbers in the keyword tool, Immediately, reports of huge drops in search traffic numbers and on forums and industry websites showed up. There have been a lot of complaints over the accuracy of the old keyword too, so Google must have agreed with the, these complaints. For now though, it's too early to see whether or not the new numbers can, can be trusted, so still be careful with the numbers Google's giving you. Over to the New York Times, who is developing a social news service in collaboration with BetterWorks, the technology company that created Bit.ly and TweetDeck, for example. The personalized service called, new, called News.me will be initially launched only for the iPad and is expected to be available later this year. This could be another step for newspapers in trying to find a way of monetizing their news, but it's uh, not the first newspaper who is trying to get their readers involved in providing the news. 
Um, the LA Times, for example, has a section that creates a personalized page of content based on users' behaviors and tastes. Still, it's interesting to see that the big newspapers are trying out stuff to get uh, new stuff working within their websites. It's always fun to know how much the other one is spending, especially when it comes to big brands and Google. Ad Age last week showed us the spending pattern of big brands on Google in June 2010. It turns out AT&T spent most, over 8 million US dollars a month, that is. It was also interesting to see that BP spent 3.59 million dollars on ads on Google at the height of the spill crisis. Damage control not only in the sea, but also online. It's an interesting graph, go check it out on the website statussearch.com. And we are going on with Bing. Very slowly, but very steadily, Bing is closing gaps towards Google and other search engines. According to Hitwise, Bing powered search, so the combined forces of Bing and Yahoo, now account for 24% of US market share. Google accounted for 71.59% of all US searches conducted in the four weeks ending August 28, 2010. According to Hitwise, Google is the biggest source of traffic to key US industries. Bing sees continuing growth over the verticals and Google delivered the most visit to the four categories uh, over a year. The four categories shown here, automotive, uh, health, shopping and travel. Bing saw double digit growth in these four categories, including a 66% increase in the shopping cate category. So Bing is doing good in the US. Time for them to get over to Europe, I would say. Microsoft Advertising then, another big news part for them. Even though last week the news was dominated by Google Instant Search, Microsoft doesn't sit and wait until that chance comes along. They announced, though a bit quietly, a launching service, a third-party ad serving for mobile in the US. This would enable agencies and advertisers to use trusted third-party ad servers such as Microsoft Atlas and Google Dart to serve mobile display ads on all, our, all the premium Microsoft mobile media properties. So the rat race over the mobile advertising is taking shape. It's not just Apple and Google anymore, it's also Microsoft uh, coming into the area. Will be continued, without a doubt. YouTube is one of the most popular websites out there, but Google's video website still not as uh, profitable. Google's CEO Eric Schmidt told journalists in France last week that the moment of profit is getting closer. YouTube is nearing profitability and its revenue is doing quite well, he said in Paris. It looks like it's going to be very successful. It takes some time, but hey, they're getting there. And who wants to make a bet on the actual day that YouTube makes a profit? Give us a sign on state of search and we'll set up a contest for that. Google saying goodbye to organic. We'll end up with that. Is Google really evil or is it not evil? The question remains open after you see this. We're seeing a lot of changes being made to the SERPs these days and uh, Google Instant of course is the biggest change we saw in the last few months or maybe even the last few years, but there's more to come. A threat, threat on Webmaster World suggests that Google might be saying goodbye to organic search altogether. Or not. The threat reports that a, te uh, that it's a test was found, which spotted in the wild in Singapore and later also in the US, so it's not just a one-time issue, uh, where Google only showed three organic results on a search with a keyboard, which usually will get you a lot more results. Say you. It's a big city, but only three results, which you can see here. You've got the maps, you've got the Wikipedia, and two other organic results, and you've got ads on the site, and search is related to on the, side, on the bottom. After the local results map and pictures, um, after Wikipedia showing up, we've got two more spots, sale.go and the Lonely Planet. Question of course remains, what's Google up to here? We'll get into that later on stateofsearch.com, so check out those posts too. It's an interesting change because after we saw Google testing out four ads on top, we see them testing out this. Chances on getting into the top three results on the organic part is, are, are getting harder and harder. So you'll have to find different ways to getting there. 
Okay, that's it. That's it again for this week. And uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter, state underscore of search, and the website stateofsearch.com, where all the links to the articles mentioned here and are available. Uh, you can find them all there with the post uh, next to uh, this uh, episode of the News Roundup. Also be sure to tune in for our Webmaster Radio Show, which airs every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central European Time, which is 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Hope you enjoyed it. Tune in to stateofsearch.com and follow us, and we'll see you again next week. I hope. Bye-bye.